I'd like to welcome everybody here today. My name is David Shackleton. I'm the leader of the Ottawa Group that's working to open a center. Thank you. That's working to open a center for men and families in Ottawa, the very first of its kind that this city has seen. And I'll be your MC today. So a few logistics first. The washrooms are in just down this hallway, off to my left. Our program is, we've got several remarkable speakers, and we have a silent auction that's ongoing, and you'll have opportunities to visit that. And we also will have a live auction for a small number of the higher value items. For anybody who's interested, after this is all over, there will be an opportunity to visit the office space that we have just arranged. Uh, it's in Vanier, 292 Montreal Road, at 5.30 p.m. Anybody who wants to see it can meet us there and check it out. We're going to be signing the lease today. Take <laughs> and we take possession on the 1st of June. So it's all happening. Um, I'd like to invite as our first speaker, uh, our chair of our board, of the, the Board of Canadian Association for Equality, Robert Samory. everyone and thanks for being here. Thanks very much for the introduction, David. Um, I'm not going to take too much of your time. There are a lot of people that have good things to say. I'm not one of them, generally speaking. Um, but I did want to point out that when CAFE started, we had a large group of people congregate on a regular basis. And by that I mean four. Four people would come together and that was uh, our large group. Since then, we've spoken and presented to sometimes hundreds and hundreds of people. Today's event is a fundraiser, which is generally difficult, and we've got a full packed house here. So with that as an introduction, I just wanted to thank everybody on the Ottawa group that has contributed both in time and other resources, uh, particularly their own time and their own emotional mental resources to the things that make CAFE as, uh, as successful as we are. And I'm going to miss out somebody, but it's going to be on me, but I'm going to read out names. At the top of the list is the person that spends a great deal of time successfully managing the Ottawa branch, David Shackleton. Thank you for all your hard work and time, David. The rest of you, Janice Fiamingo, James Vincent, Meg Rickett, Victor Maltby, Eric Verweis, I hope I'm pronouncing Verweis, I'm sorry, uh, David Pritchard, John Kingsley, Jean-Jacques Degrange, and Elizabeth Anderson, thank you all very much. I hope if I haven't read your name this year, I might be able to read it in a future, in a future meeting. Enjoy the rest of the day. So let me tell you what's going to happen today. There'll be a first course, a salad, coming around shortly. And the uh, waiters and waitresses will be taking your order uh, from the menu that's just beside your plate there. The speakers that we have, we will have um, a first session with uh, Justin and uh, Justin Trottier. We have uh, John Robson. Jean-Jacques de Grange, and then we'll have uh, a short uh, active live auction, and then finally we'll actually have lunch. The kitchen tells me it takes them half an hour to get the lunch after they have the orders with a group this size, so I'm sorry about that. Lunch is going to probably slip towards 2 o'clock, but at least we'll have the first course. And then we have uh, a few more speakers, and 
finishing off with our keynote speaker, Senator Ann Cools. Any questions about the itinerary? Can you tell us approximately when it would end here? It will end at four, by 4 p.m. Thank you. Okay. So let me tell you then a little bit about my involvement here. I want to say that this, is, this organization, the Canadian Association for Equality, is remarkable. Now, I know this kind of thing gets said a lot, but I have, in my 63 years, worked for a lot of organizations, and none of them have approached the quality of this organization. This is remarkable. It's unusual because of the quality of the people that it has attracted, and it's unusual because of the difficulty of the task that it has chosen to push forward in society and how well it does that. CAFE is far and away the best organization I have ever been associated with. So here's an example. Please put your hand up if you came to this event today from Toronto, from the Toronto area. Look at that, how many people. If you came here from Montreal. You see what I mean? Remarkable. The Ottawa Group is just, is just as remarkable. We're only two years old. Last year we organized CAFE's first national conference here in Ottawa. We had 80 people, very successful event. This year we're opening up a full-time center as Ottawa's first hub for men and boys services. We will do it, and it will be remarkable. So my message is, this group is worthy of your support. This organization is worthy of your support. Most of the Ottawa group are here today. Make sure you get an opportunity to talk to them about what we're doing and how that feels. So let me introduce our first speaker. Justin Trottier is the Executive Director of the Canadian Association for Equality and the Canadian Centre for Men and Families, Toronto branch. That's the first time that's ever been said. <laughs> the Centre is a open and inclusive space serving as a hub for services focused on the health and well-being of boys, men, fathers, and families. That's what we're going to duplicate here in Ottawa. Services include therapy, peer support, legal assistance, employment counseling, fathering programs, and support for male victims of trauma, abuse, and domestic violence. Now, Justin, you would think that would be a full-time job, but there's a lot of things, other things he did that I don't know much about. So I want to tell you a little about those. Justin is host and executive producer of The Star Spot, an astronomy-themed podcast and radio show. He's a passionate proponent of science education, especially in the fields of astronomy and space exploration. He founded the University of Toronto's Astronomy and Space Exploration Society and was its president for three years. He joined the board of directors of the Canadian Space Society and he's been the editor-in-chief of the Canadian Space Gazette. He founded a national education charity called the Centre for Inquiry, which advances critical thinking and scientific literacy. Justin speaks regularly in the media in defense of fundamental freedoms like free speech, freedom of the press, and freedom of inquiry, and participates in debates and dialogue which bring together groups from vastly differing backgrounds and perspectives. So please welcome Justin Trottier.
Thanks very much, David, for that very kind introduction. <coughs> Too kind, I think. Uh, maybe I'll hold this <coughs> if I can. Sorry. Thanks, John. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So first of all, wow. It's just amazing to be in this room here with all of you uh, this afternoon. I'm just blown away that we got all of you together. Uh, this was a lot of work. Uh, you heard some names before, um, but it really doesn't do justice to just kind of throw those names at you. There is so much effort that's gone behind uh, what, uh, what you've come together to experience here today. So thank you to the volunteers. Uh, thanks so much to, uh, to our speakers as well for, for joining us on what I think is going to end up being a really landmark occasion. It really has been a long time coming. And I don't just mean the many months of work that went into organizing this particular event. I think it's been years, if not decades, that we advocates for the interests of boys and men have dreamt about building a headquarters here in the national capital. And I'm so glad that you're all able to join us here on this really special occasion, this culmination of our six-month-long fundraising campaign. Uh, we're honored to have some special guests uh, joining us tonight. Uh, we anticipate, although I don't think he's arrived yet, uh, the member of provincial parliament for the Ottawa riding of Carleton, Mississippi Mills, Jack McLaren. Has Jack arrived? Um, I'm here for Jack. I'm Janet. Oh, Janet. Jack's wife is here. Jack's not able to make it? Oh, it's too bad. Okay. Well, we thank Janet and Jack for their, their support for us. Thank you very much. I also want to acknowledge that we also are joined tonight by the Honorable Roger Galloway, former member of Parliament for the riding of Sarnia Lambton. Roger? Uh, in this room, probably many of you know, but if you don't, in the late 90s, uh, Roger joined Senator Ann Cools, our keynote speaker tonight, uh, this afternoon rather, to lead a joint Senate House of Commons committee that was set up to improve child custody laws following separation divorce. And that committee would go on to recommend shared parenting for the first time in Canadian history in their landmark report for the sake of the children. So it's just so perfect that we bring together uh, Roger Galloway and Senator Cools here with us this afternoon. Thank you both for being here. Because, my friends, today we're celebrating another landmark achievement for boys, men, fathers, and their families. If, thanks to your support, we're successful in opening the first Canadian Centre for Men and Families in Ottawa, it will mark the first time any organization has been able to open multiple men's centres in Canada. And it will demonstrate that our model is working, that it can be translated into life-changing programs for boys and men at sites all across Canada. So again, thank you for being part of that. And as David has indicated and Robert before him, this is no easy task. The road to today has been marked by obstacles at virtually every turn. Any new charity uh, seeking to establish itself will experience a number of challenges that can be nearly insurmountable. Acquiring funds, recruiting talented people, demonstrating legitimacy. In fact, most new movements never get off the ground as a result of these challenges. But in our case, you can multiply all of that by a factor of maybe a hundred, maybe more. Because as most of you know, we're not your typical charity. When you center your mandate on improving the status, health, and well-being of boys and men, you better be in for a rough ride. Some people in this room, I think, know what I'm talking about. Uh, venues may cancel your agreements with little notice. Universities may charge you exorbitant security fees just to allow your events to take place on their campus. Protesters may engage in riotous and dangerous behavior that compromise the safety of your guests. Media outlets may interview you not to tell the news, but to hunt out damaging material. And student government presidents may occasionally levy accusations of death threats by you and your members. True story, all of that. And yet we've succeeded against all the odds, and I think we've done that for two reasons. The first I'm looking at, and that's all of you, our supporters, our members, our donors, and especially our volunteers. In fact, many of our volunteers have had truly horrible personal experiences, far more soul-destroying than anything we as an organization have experienced. Imagine having suffered years of domestic abuse, finally having the courage to report this to the police, 
And instead of finding support, you find yourself arrested. Imagine a loving father, his children his entire life, who after his marriage comes to an end, cannot see his child except once every other week for years on end. These men, and many women as well, have had horrible experiences that might easily have led them to choose to isolate themselves from the world. And yet instead they've chosen to respond by working with CAFE to do something positive, to try to make a difference so that others won't have to suffer as they had. And I think that's remarkable. The other reason we've succeeded against the odds is I think the values and the principles that guide us as an organization. These are based on the same kind of belief that responding to injustice with a positive, problem-solving attitude, no matter what's thrown at you, and we've had pretty much everything thrown at us, is always better than reacting in anger or frustration. So let me read to you from the CAFE Statement of Values, because I think here is the little secret to our success in Toronto, in Ottawa, and in points beyond. We are an open and diverse community that embraces all individuals. We value equality, tolerance, respect, dignity, integrity, diversity, and acceptance. We value all fundamental freedoms, freedom of speech, of expression, of thought, of association, and of the press. We encourage the respectful exchange of ideas to foster greater understanding. We value dialogue and peaceful approaches to settling differences. We oppose harassment, violence, and advocate and the advocacy of violence in any form. And we value the human rights of each and every individual. We believe that boys and men share a common collective interest with women and girls. We believe that through promoting the health and welfare of any individual, all will benefit. I described the challenges we face, but I want to conclude on a more hopeful note. Because not only have we succeeded against those odds, but in the very act of opening that center in Toronto, we have witnessed a remarkable change in the reaction to our work. And we have grown in, in credibility through the programs that we run. So I'm going to give you some examples of our success over the last two years. For one, Legal Aid Ontario which is associated with the government of Ontario, has vetted our organization as the first agency focused on men to be able to provide legal aid certificates to male victims of domestic abuse. That's a pretty big deal, folks. We have been invited by a broad number of agencies, and this, the invitations are increasing with time, to come in and talk about the services that we run in the form of workshops in order to help these agencies better identify and support men who have had experiences of various kinds. Uh, we've been invited by shelters, by family mediation agencies, and by the Toronto Police. We've been recognized in the Ontario Legislature during the second reading of Bill 170, the Men's Health Awareness Week Act, as one of several stakeholders by the MPP who sponsored the bill. Uh, we, we've been supported by a prominent community foundation which now hosts golf tournaments for us every year where the proceeds support our fathering programs. And we've come together with the nation's largest anti-abuse organization, the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness, to host the annual Healing Journeys Conference, the first conference of its kind focused on the intersection of men, trauma and mental health. And we're getting referrals more and more from many, many community agencies, hospitals, victim service organizations, the Canadian Mental Health Association, Catholic Family Services, you name it. We are becoming an embedded part of the social service matrix in Toronto. So we have really seen a game changer for boys and men in Toronto by opening the Center, Canadian Centre for Men and Families. We think the same thing is going to happen here in Ottawa. And this is just the beginning of that. Why is Ottawa important? Well, as I said earlier, if we can show that this model that we have can succeed in multiple locations, and two is multiple, uh, then we know that we have a model that we think we can uh, scale uh, to all parts of the country. But of course, Ottawa is the federal capital, so the symbolic value of having a presence in Ottawa will clearly not go unnoticed. Part of the purpose of the centre isn't only social services. We will also be operating a national advocacy centre where we will train men and women uh, to work in support of improving program services and public policies that right now may be leaving people out. So again, I want to thank you all for your support. I think we're making a big difference in the lives of boys, men, fathers and families. Our mental health, father involvement, abuse support and legal assistance programs are having a real impact on families in need. 
Thank you very much. I just want to tell you where we're at with the fundraising campaign, if I may, and you'll get updates throughout the evening. Our goal right now is to reach 75,000. We were quicker than anticipated in getting to our original objective, which was 50,000. We're now at 65,000, going into the last few days of the month. Just keep in mind that, again, any money that comes in up until the end of May is being doubled by uh, two of our very philanthropic and generous sponsors, so we still have a bit of a gap to close. We're obviously hoping that tonight we can get uh, most, if not all, of the way there. We've got some bidding on some important uh, and, I think, very valuable items here. That'll help us get there, uh, but, but please, your contributions are very welcome. And I just want to thank uh, our VIP uh, donors in particular. Those are the folks who registered at the VIP level tonight, so let me just read these, these kind people, uh, read their names off for you. Uh, Roger Galloway, thank you very much. Philippe Boucher, Daniel Chankton, Phil Van Nest, Richard Frankowski, Fred Litwin, Patrick Lemieux, Vince Barbieri, St Stefan Scholand, Guy Olmsted, Ian Pulsifer, Stephen Norton, Paul Sandor, and Stephen Galazowski, pardon me. Can we get a round of applause for our VIP registrants? And in addition, I want to thank those donors who have given uh, over $1,000 each. So these are Jean-Jacques Desgrange, Janice Fiamengo, Catherine Willow, Malcolm Newell, Brian Ludmer, and especially our two philanthropic sponsors, the folks involved in the matching campaign who make this possible, Ray Van Enoch and Hal Roback. Let's hear it for them. By the way, it's, it's not too late to register as a VIP supporter of our work. Of course, we are very happy to uh, up your, your level of support tonight. That is uh, part of what tonight's about. We want to make sure that we do take full advantage of the donor matching opportunity. And the more funds we have, the more life-changing programs we can run uh, here in Ottawa. So please give generously. Thanks again for your attention.